Hey guys, I'm Camille Lambert, field agronomist with Bex Hybrids. And I'm Luke Wilson, I'm the PFR technician down here at the Henderson, Kentucky farm. Uh, today we're going to share with you a study that we've really seen some interesting data off of and that we wanted to bring out to you. It's our nitrogen rate fungicide response study. Camille, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so the PFR book's going to be coming out soon, but this is one we're excited about. Basically, we're looking at nitrogen rate and if there's a fungicide response. So, you know, a lot of times people are using a higher rate or a lower rate and does an in-season fungicide application still pay at different rates? So you want to tell us about how the study went down? So this is a multi-location study. We did it at our London, Ohio farm, our uh, headquarters in Atlanta, Indiana, and down here at the Henderson, Kentucky site. Down here in Henderson, uh, we planted uh, early May. We used our hybrid 6622. Camille, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so 6622, it's one of our most flexi hybrids. And so that's why we picked it because we have different nitrogen rates and we used fungicide with no fungicide. So we thought we might see a good response by choosing a hybrid that flexes a lot. So that's the reason we chose 6622. We planted it at a population 34,000. That's our sta standard planting population here at the farm. This was a corn after corn field. Um, so in that typical scenario, we usually put out 215 pounds of nitrogen for a nitrogen program. Mm -hmm. um, so this year, since we had this nitrogen rate study, we do 30 units of uh, UAN two by two, and then we side dress at V3. So we looked at three different nitrogen rates of 150, 200, and 250 pounds of nitrogen. So we just made up that difference in our side dress application. Um, Typically here at the farm, our corn after soybean studies are about 190 pounds of nitrogen and our okay. corn after corn studies are 215 pounds. We just use these numbers just to kind of have a level playing field, kind of clean up the data, give yeah. us somewhere to start. Okay. Um, so that kind of takes care of the nitrogen part. This was a fungicide response, so we did a treated and an untreated pass and it was a replicated study. So our fungicide pass was made in uh, mid-July. Whenever we did the disease rating, some of the stuff we saw was gray leaf spot, diplodia, uh, northern corn leaf blight, and some rust. Okay, so we used Travipro on the study right at R1. We PFR approved uh, Travipro back in 2018. So we know it works. It's got three actives. We've got Salatinol, which is the SDHI, Azoxystrobin, which is your Stroby, and then a Propiconazole, so that's the triazole uh, component, component of the study. And basically, what, what we think happened, and we're going to show you the data in a minute, is when the corn plant undergoes stress. So Luke told us that we had a lot of foliar diseases present. When that corn plant starts to stress, it produces ethylene, and basically it, it shuts the plant down. When the plant's under stress, the stomata, they can't open and close properly, and the corn plant's only job is to produce one seed to make it to the next growing season, and that's all it's worried about. So it's going to kind of shut the plant down, produce the ethylene, keep the plant alive, so if we can keep that plant from not producing ethylene, we can stay in our, in our high yield environment. And that was the goal of this study. We want to prolong our grain fill period, keep the plant alive, and see if there are differences in our nitrogen rate. So we're going to get to some data. So whenever we got started at harvest this year, we noticed some abnormalities and variability in our test weight. So we decided to take a look at kernel depth and kernel size. Um, so it kind of worked out that whenever we pulled up this study, um, say we took out a s sample of grain and actually counted the kernels and took some pictures and we're going to show you some data here to show the difference in our multi-location data and what we saw down here at Kentucky. Yeah, so something we thought was really cool, we, we counted seeds per pound. And when you compare the seeds per pound on the treated with Travicro versus no fungicide, we had less seeds um, on our fungicide treatments and you know you think about less seeds and it sounds like a negative thing but it's really a positive thing because less seeds make means bigger seeds so when we show you the yield data um, we noticed that we had a positive return on investment on all the treatments that had a fungicide however when you break it apart with the 150 200 250 we noticed that the 200 was the best return on investment why do you think that is well, that's kind of what we found over the years that our best ROI on corn after corn ground was about 200 pounds of nitrogen. That's why we've gone with that 215 uh, pounds of nitrogen rate in our corn after corn studies. Yeah, okay. So I talked about ethylene production and how it the when the plant's stressed, it kind of shuts down. So when we put Travipro on, we've got three different rates of fungicide here. We've got 150, 
200 and 250. And I wanted you to see the, the size of the seed because I think that's a really cool thing to notice. I'm gonna step back here. Um, but 200 pounds, we think that's the economic optimal, but look at the seed size when you compare it to the 150. So we put a penny next to it just so that you can kind of notice. But we, we saw a really good return on investment. So when we put all the locations together, we're at a $33 return on investment. And that includes the cost of the fungicide. So we're still making $33 return. But down here in the south, we had southern rust move in really bad late season. I'm gonna show you a picture. But we had almost a $100 return on investment um, at that 200 pounds of nitrogen per acre with Tribopro. So we're really confident that, that fungicide works, especially this year down south, um, but we're seeing a really good return on investment across all three of those nitrogen rates. So like we said, this is one of the studies we're really excited about when we were sifting through some of the data for the PFR book this year. Um, just keep an eye out for that book either online or in your mailboxes this holiday season. Yep. If you have any questions, reach out to your local BEX representative. Thanks.